What is up, 7-3 fans? Welcome back to another episode of the 7-3 Garage. My name is Brandon. If this is your first time visiting, be sure to check out my last video so that you are up to date for this one. I will take everybody over to the uh, staging area for all the tools and everything that we have going on. So um, basically gonna get into what, we're got, what we have going on today. Uh, I finally have gotten around to getting the proper uh, equipment and tools that I need to make this job happen. Uh, it's been a little bit of a long road and some stuff that I'm not gonna get into, but um, long story short, had an issue acquiring a, the right tool to get this done. Um, nonetheless, I ended up getting the tool, the proper tool, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like and uh, show you a couple tips and tricks that I've learned along the way here uh, to get the truck to this point. Hoping to have the thing running by tonight. Um, that's my goal. I got my dad coming over and another friend's gonna be over here today to uh, help kind of speed up the process just a little bit. So let's jump over to the table and I'll show you uh, what we got going on. Okay, so here we are. Um, you don't already know I'm going to be switching. Uh, if you haven't seen me in the last video, I'm switching from a Comp Cams 910 style valve spring, which is this one I have in my left hand here, to a Comp Cams uh, Beehive style valve spring. These offer a larger, a much larger amount of seat pressure uh, than the Comp 910 springs. The Comp 910 springs are right around 92 pounds of seat pressure, I believe. Um, <clears throat> so that's where those are. And the uh, comp, the, the, the comp cams uh, beehive style spring is about 160 seat pounds uh, while the valve is shut. So these offer a tremendous amount more seat pressure. The reason being is we are looking for a, uh, a, a stiffer valve spring to pull that valve to pull that valve back into the cylinder head uh, during each combustion cycle. That allows for better performance with higher RPM, higher boost, things like that. So that is where we're at with the spring selection. Um, this is the old one. Uh, and basically, I'm kind of learning along the way when I'm doing this. I've done valve springs before, but the heads have been out of the truck. So just trying to learn you know, the proper way to get everything handled here. This is a similar tool. I don't know if anyone's ever used one of these before. This is a valve spring tool specifically designed for the 7.3 liter power stroke. Any year, doesn't matter if it's Super Duty, doesn't matter if it's OBS, but this is the valve spring tool. There's a company that I believe made the tool for Ford. If I'm wrong, someone please correct me, but I believe it was made by a company called Rotunda. And Rotunda designed this tool uh, for the 7.3 liter mechanic to uh, make it easy to switch out a valve spring uh, by utilizing the rocker arm hold down bolt hole and basically just applying that nice pressure, even pressure on top of the spring, as you can see there, to compress the spring and release the keeper. So if you've never done this before, or have no idea what I'm talking about, I will be showing everybody uh, once we get onto the truck here, uh, a couple other things. <clears throat> so we got our nice tool here. These are the heavy duty retainers. These are also a comp cam part. These sit nicely on top here. These are heavy duty for more spring pressure. And just to show everybody for comparison, kind of crazy. This is the factory valve stem retainer or keepers. If you want to call them, people call them retainers or keepers. And then these are comp cams retainers. <clears throat> size difference. These are heavy duty retainers. That is a pretty tremendous size difference and these are uh, these are awesome. So pretty excited to get these back on but kind of just wanted to show everybody uh, what those look like. So there's the old springs. I got a rocker arm that I actually found more. This is cylinder number one when I was going through it this morning and this one has more cracks in it. So not cool. Not cool at all. So that one is done. I've already since put a new one on there. I got about half of them done. Uh, I've been marking them off as I go. And I also have my uh, ejector hold down bolt torque on there as well. My wrench is set up properly. So we'll be doing that. Another little tip that I learned that I guess I could point out now while I'm over here is uh, when you're doing this, especially in the truck, it's always good to have a nice magnet, like a little uh, telescoping magnet. You can get them at auto parts store for, I don't know, a dollar fifty or even cheaper. But this has made a huge difference. I actually saw another uh, YouTube video. This is made by CRC. I bought. I love CRC products. They make a lot of good stuff. Um, lubes, oils, um, and uh, gasket maker, things like that, silicone. Uh, but they make this, it's an engine assembly lube. I believe ARP makes There's some other companies out there in the market, but it's a graphite-based, uh, it's a graphite-based um, engine assembly, uh, lube, I guess lubricant, if you will. But basically what it does is it helps the keepers, and I'll show you when I go to do it. If you take the keeper, 
you put a little dab of this stuff on here, the engine assembly lube, so that way when you apply it to the valve stem, it sticks. So you don't have to chase the things around because they're kind of finicky. If you're working in the truck, it's a little bit tighter than it would be obviously on an engine stand. So uh, that makes life a lot easier, but you can basically slide it onto the, onto the uh, valve stem. You can feel with the groove that is gonna engage into the valve stem and you know that you have a solid lock onto the valve and you can start releasing that spring pressure. So um, I'm gonna get another thing set up here to show you guys how this kind of works and uh, we'll go from there and we'll get started. Wanted to do this off the truck and I can show you what the completed uh, product looks like. But this is basically how this goes. You kind of have a mental image in your head as I'm doing this on the truck because it's gonna be kind of hard to see. So as the new spring is put on there, a pressure is applied. So the, the spring has, pre has the pressure on the top of, this, uh, of the valve spring here. The spring will come to a full compression or almost a full, full compression or spring bind. The retainer will be on it while that's happening. Once you have it compressed, the valve stem will be visible. And I'll try and do my best to show everybody when I'm in there. But the valve stem will be sticking up here, maybe about a half an inch. With the assembly lube applied on here, you basically stick it onto the valve, both sides. So these will sit kind of like this. They will not touch on both sides. They'll be kind of open because you obviously have the diameter of the, uh, of the valve stem in there. These will basically sit like that. As the pressure is released uh, via the tool, the spring will come back up. When these bind on here, and by these I mean the grooves on the, uh, on the keepers, you can see there it is from the bottom. But as they bind, they will grab the valve and pull the valve back into the cylinder head. So what I've been doing here, and my uncle is an old school drag racer and he even told me a nice, a, a pretty cool tip. What, uh, what they used to do if they were checking valves is if you basically remove the the valve, the, the valve seal off the valve. You can lightly pull up on the valve and you can kind of roll the, uh, the valve back and forth and feel where it's meeting surfaces in the, in the bottom of the cylinder head. If it's, if it's bent, if it's whatever, uh, if it's misshapen obviously, you'll feel the inconsistency and you may even feel it drag. So all the ones that I've done so far, they've been fine. Uh, I haven't really had any other issues, major issues, but I am gonna compression test that far cylinder, or at least try to, just to make sure that it makes compression. So I did buy a compression tester for that. So I got the numbers and the uh, things online on a form for the adequate compression numbers. So uh, we're gonna do that when this thing's back together. I'm gonna turn the engine over with the injectors unplugged, just to make sure everything looks like it's good. The engine turns over, everything moves, nothing's gonna break off when the thing fires up for the first time. My dad just got here. Uh, I was able to get another cylinder while I was waiting for him, uh, buttoned up and done. I'm actually working on the cylinder that broke. Um, we just felt the, uh, the rear valve. We did the same test that I've always, that I've been doing since I started. So I'm gonna get the sun out of everybody's eyes here. So I went ahead and spun this one. I'll show you guys what that looks like right now, but it feels awesome. It doesn't feel bent and it's actually super smooth. So, uh, I'll show you what we got going on here. This is the tightest one. Um, if you have, uh, the existing, this is like a little vacuum box that comes from the factory here. Mine is gone. I took it off. I really, it, I don't think it really even does anything. Um, but if you have that in the way, you will need to remove that and all that foil and stuff. Um, the tool actually fits awesome in here. It just comes a little bit close to here. So I have to use the opened end of the wrench, not a big deal, but just to, let me see if I get this thing in here a little bit tighter. I apologize. So here's a valve. I don't like that position, but here's the valve. Basically you can see the cylinder. I have it at a top dead center. I made a little gauge here. This is just a piece of tie wire and some tape. And uh, once you remove the glow plug and you drop this in here, I basically gauge it to have it sit just like that. So when the tape is just about middle um, of the uh, injector solenoid here, you know that it's top dead center and the valve cannot fall into the cylinder. So I keep that there, but you can hear it's nice and uh, it's nice in there. So basically you take the valve and you just roll the thing like this and you can feel it spinning in there. And I don't, it just feels nice and smooth all the way around. It doesn't bind, it doesn't, doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. So uh, this is perfect. So my dad's actually getting some of the stuff, the new rocker arms ready to go here. Uh, we're getting everything lubed up and I'm gonna have him film me uh, putting this one on so everybody can see. But like I showed everybody before, we are uh, ready to rock here. So uh, let's throw this one on. Here I have a nice little uh, Tupperware here just to keep everything organized. So I'm not trying to balance things in my hand, but basically just go ahead and get the uh, retainer in the top here. Oh, Gianni's here. Um, I have found that when you get this onto the cylinder, or I keep saying cylinder, once you get this onto the, uh, in the right spot, I found it easiest if you can kind of rotate the spring to where you have the valve stem almost in the middle of, uh, 
almost <laughs> that's definitely going in the video <laughs> what's up dog Gianni just showed up so he's here right here dog got you behind the back uh ah, what's up so try to get a oh Alice is here what's up Good. How are you? Good. What's up, Alice? So, um, basically, just try and get the uh, the retainer in the right spot here. Kind of get the valve stem almost in the middle, so it helps when you get your compression down. Uh, it'll just go ahead and make the pressure nice and even. So, um, we'll go ahead and get this in place. And again, this is the tightest spot so far. So we'll see how this goes. But so I basically get this hand tight. I'll throw the wrench on it. I kind of hold hold this stable. This tool is awesome. This is the tightest, like I said, this is the one that's had the least amount of clearance so far and it was still a breeze, it really wasn't that bad. So I'll get this basically snug, let that kind of hit. You don't have to go crazy on this because it's uh, it's just cast iron, but this is the tedious part here. So basically keep spinning this thing around until you get enough room to throw that wrench on. Oops, once it creates enough pressure, you can get that thing on there. The one thing that I was worried about the most was as you compress this uh, valve spring, this bolt, the hardware that's on top of the tool, starts to get pretty close to the top of the valve stem. At the end of the day, it doesn't touch it. I've compressed the spring to spring bind and it does not touch it. And uh, even if it does, it's only going to push it into the cylinder and it's going to stop on the piston. So I, you don't really have to worry about putting a lot of nasty pressure on the back of uh, the valve. So kind of where that's at so we'll get this down is that franklin yeah there he is frankie's got a new motorcycle i'll have to check that thing out all right let's see if i get my box in on here frank what's up dude oh you know making it happen trying to make some power yeah that's always the thing with seven three owners trying to make power all right so once you yeah <laughs> Classic. So basically just compress this thing down here. I don't know how well everyone can see the valve, but that stem starts to come in nice there. I'll even pull on it just a little bit. I got sweat dripping off my face into the oil, so that's really cool. So here's our nice prepped retainer. Kind of be careful with these. You have access to the front and the back of the tool, so I'll push on it basically until it grabs. There's one and it sticks on there like glue, which is really nice this next one here and we'll do the same thing through this side there it is uh oh children are crying what the heck's going on here all right so there it is whoops i need to lift this one up you can get these little pick sets i bought one at uh this is from lowe's really cheap and um basically just Put it up there and i can feel right now that they are both bound onto the collar and they stay perfect just like that so once you have the once you have them on there reverse process just go ahead and apply your these ratcheting wrenches are a lifesaver but i basically take it up until it's whoops just about to hit keep coming and once that pressure starts coming up on that valve spring it will start to bite into uh there we go there's the limit kind of twist that thing out of there here we go it will uh start to settle those keepers in and the pressure's applied and should be good to go so we'll finish this up and i'll show you what the product looks like but i got this tool it's not very cheap an actual rotunda tool is closer to 300 dollars. it's a lot of money to kind of swallow for just a a tool you may use a couple of times but it was worth every penny to me just because it, there we go, just because it just makes the ease of it so much better and uh, the engine doesn't have to come out, which is nice. So take your tool off here. All right. And I'll show you what the final thing looks like. That's it. So tools off, you have your clearance and that is how it's done. Some of these will sit uneven and that's fine. Um, Everything's good. I will tap on that with, with a, a rubber mallet just a little bit just to make sure that everything's seated. But uh, we're going to move on to the next one. And then after that, we got two left. And uh, we're going to roll this thing over and see what she's got. Look at that. It shit. looks so nice. So Frank's got a sweet bike that his pops won in a raffle for $10. <laughs> this is a 2020, isn't it? Yeah. 
Dude, this thing is sick. They drove they they drove up to uh Daytona, right Frank? Daytona. Wow, man. This thing is so sick. Holy crap, dude. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh, dude, look at the speakers. That's so cool. Damn. This thing is awesome. Man, I love the paint, dude. Look at the paint on this thing. That's unbelievable. Somebody's got to win. Holy crap, man. This bike is sick. Dude, how cool is that, man? $10 motorcycle. $10 motorcycle. Pretty cool. I mean, it's a nice small bike. It's really not real big. No, it's not big. I had a little issue with the farthest or the rearmost spring on cylinder number seven. Had a hard time getting the tool in there, but I figured it would be more beneficial to keep going. We only had cylinders three and four. So I'm about to finish up cylinder number four. So I'm gonna have my dad uh, film. The positioning's a little bit better so you can see how the tool works. I'm getting the factory spring off, so I'll have him film that. The last one I know you saw me installing the new spring. So this is getting the factory, or not the factory, but the 910 spring that I had in there. And then uh, we are going to try and deal with that last spring. That's the only thing holding us up. So uh, I'm going to give him the camera and let him film me getting this one on. Here, Pops, you ready? Yeah. You just hold that for me. So I put my application this right there. All right. So we spring tools on and in place. And now I'm just going to compress this here. If the lighting's good. If I can get my tool to work. Thank you, Harbor Freight. So basically just compress this until... Um, basically just until spring bind or you see the keeper start to get kind of get loose. And like, like I said, that little pick set that I have, start, this starts to get snug, that's it, I'll let it go. The magnet that I have, awesome, like I said, this is like about $1.30 or $1.25 you can get at any auto parts store. Um, I'll kind of just reach under here, sorry. And uh, you can even just put a little bit of pressure on these keepers and kind of slide the valve up if possible. That'll help you get a little more access to them. I think three and four are the easiest ones so far, to be honest with you. The rest of them are, there you go. So get the, get the room. Sometimes you can get both keepers with one swoop or you can just, you have to kind of work it and get, the, get them out one by one. Valve, come up a little more. There's one, I'm gonna come around on this side. There it is. So there's your keepers. Make it nice and easy. Where's that bin at? It's over there. I'll take the camera for just a second. And I'm going to give him these so everyone saw the size comparison with these already. Two best things. Got a, like $2 worth of tools right there. Well, I'm not ready for those yet. I got to get the factory spring off yet. Sorry. I'll give you those. Let me get this off. There's my ratchet. There we go. So. Again, just make sure your cylinder's top dead center. Pull the pressure off this. Of course, by the last one, you're like a you're like a whiz kid with getting this thing on and off. You got your routine down, but that's, that's the way it goes. It's just auto mechanics. At least in my experience. And I'm not a mechanic, but here we go. The directions say specifically for this tool, and I would hope nobody would do it, but I'm sure they said it because someone's probably done it and complained, is they say do not use an impact gun. Uh, while you're installing any of those bolts to make time faster, just use a ratcheting wrench or um, a, just a standard ratchet. There you go. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's not worth breaking and slamming shit on for no reason. But that's just my, that's my thought process. If you're happy, if you're comfortable doing it, do it, but I don't like to do it. So I've just been pulling the valve seals like I like I showed you in the last last section here. Uh, just basically checking on making sure everything's okay. And these are brand new, so there's nothing wrong with these. But um, as you can see, that valve down there, so I'm trying to get the best view here. Kind of just moves, hits the cylinder, just give it a quick spin, and it feels fine. I can feel the, the valve seat, everything feels all right in there. So we're going to get this one buttoned up and uh, we're going to jump back to that last cylinder in just a couple minutes and see if we can figure something out. If not, I'll have to wait till tomorrow. And we we're thinking about even just unbolting the passenger side motor mount and jacking the engine up to get a little bit more access. But uh, we're going to try it out in just a couple minutes and see how far we get. It is the second night and uh, I know yesterday, well, it seems like yesterday, but it was just a couple minutes ago, uh, I was talking about what we we're going to have to do to get that 
uh, the rearmost spring on cylinder number seven. What we ended up having to do was uh, unbolt the motor mount, the passenger side, the two nuts, they're 18 millimeter. I'll show you where those are. And we basically took a floor jack and just applied a little bit of pressure to the engine just to lift it up. I mean, how much did we came up? Pops about a half inch or three quarters of an inch, yeah, if that. Um, just a very small amount just to get this to clear. I'll show you right now, just to get the uh, top of the tool to clear here because obviously I was having, I was, it, the tool was hitting right back here on the uh, on the heater box. So I was gonna try and dremel this out. I'm like, you know what? If we just jack the motor up just a little bit, that'll give us enough room. So this is the last factory spring. So we are gonna uh, get this taken off right now, get the new one on and button up uh, this valve train here. We already have the, the rocker arms and the push rods, everything's ready to go. And we're gonna get that dialed in. Once that's done and everything's buttoned up, I'm gonna then go ahead and turn the engine over. Uh, just go ahead and crank it, like I said, without the fuel injectors plugged in. And we're just gonna make sure all the, everything moves right and everything looks good and nothing's going crazy. Uh, then after that, we'll probably go ahead and throw the under valve cover harnesses on and plug the injectors in and just fire it up, make sure it idles and then button everything back in. So we are gonna get started on this and we will be back in just a second to show you what the final product looks like. We are officially done with the valve train. Just torque down the last rocker arm uh, bolts here on cylinder number seven. In case anybody's wondering, it's 120 inch pounds or 20 foot pounds. That is the math. This side's all buttoned up, but like I said, as you can see, I have the injectors unplugged. If you have the fuel injectors unplugged, the truck will not start, obviously, because the injectors won't fire. However, it will turn over. So that is what we're gonna do right now. Uh, I'm gonna jump in the truck and have my dad watch uh, the valve train move. And uh, if everything's good, I'll get the, the harnesses plugged in and we're gonna fire it. I'm gonna see if I can let it idle here without oil trying, you know, going everywhere. And basically just make sure everything's good while it's idling. If everything's good, I'll button all the, uh, the two intercooler pipes up and get the valve covers on and uh, maybe take it around the block and see how everything does. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, you ready? I think it turns over fast as hell. How's everything's moving? Yep. Did you look? You look the passenger side too. Everything looks good. Yeah, I do it again. Yeah, if you want, if you want to try it one more time, just to be safe. I, you know, I get paranoid with stuff like this, but do one more time here. Ready? Ready. Good. Cool. So we're gonna we're gonna get these valve covers, or excuse me, we're gonna get the valve cover gaskets on, get the injectors and the glow plugs plugged in, and we're gonna fire this thing up, and hopefully it's good. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, we have uh, the electronics are all plugged in, glow plugs, injectors, we got the harnesses all good. Uh, as of right now, the valve train is off. Uh, or excuse me, I'm all messed up. The valve covers are off. Uh, Dad's gonna sit here and just kind of watch and make sure everything's good. And uh, hopefully nothing catches on fire, so let's see what happens. Where if I, I think my keys are still in here, yeah. All right, got the garage open, get a lung full of diesel here in just a second. All right, you ready? Okay, dipstick's going in. I'm gonna roll these windows down and hopefully nothing blows up. See what happens. All right. Ready? All right. Yeehaw, brother. Sounds pretty good, huh? Got a little smoke in here. Um, 
we're gonna get the valve covers on this thing and uh, pull it out of the garage and just let it keep idling and uh, just go from there. So sit tight. The ride out was successful, uh, as far as I know, and um, everything sounded good. The truck's still idling very, very nicely. So I uh, just got it back in the garage for the night. I got the Z backed up in there. Just cleaned that today, actually, gave that a little detail. But uh, both of the ladies are in the garage now. Um, I'm gonna be driving this to work in the morning. It's only about five, 10 miles away from uh, the house. So we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna drive it decently kind of the same deal rolling with the power see how it does but fingers crossed everything will be good and hopefully if everything's good uh, i can continue to build up from here as as far as uh as far as the engine goes and just some other very minor things i want to do i want to get uh a lot of things on the outside handle with this truck some of the trim pieces some of the interior components like i said the door kind of shuts shitty so uh, i want to go ahead and take care of that and that's that's basically it for right now so I uh, appreciate everyone tuning in as always and uh, really appreciate the support for the page. I apologize that I haven't been uh, making a video. I just didn't really want to waste time with some with some nonsense in between. I just want to kind of be straight to the point with this stuff and as I know you guys tune in for the content and, uh, and how to do things. So uh, hopefully the advice that I gave you will help you if this is something you end up doing unexpectedly or something that you need to do in the future. But uh, I think that's it guys. Uh, like I said, uh, please share these videos if you if you know people who are, who are into 7.3s or you know people who, who think they like motorsports, whatever. Uh, but really appreciate all the, all the support and the continued support as always. So uh, please tune in for the next episode. I'll see what I have coming up. Maybe we'll do an update video with this and we'll talk about some other things coming up here in the future. We do have some other parts that I have uh, in the back of my mind that I want to get ordered soon and get on the truck and do a little install and how-to video. So keep an eye out for that. But um, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, just keep an eye out for all of the upcoming stuff. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I keep updating uh, my page on there with some uh, quick updates so you can see if I have stuff come in or just updates on the truck and some other shenanigans filled in there as well uh, when I have the time. But that is it, guys. As always, thank you for watching. My name is Brandon. This is the 7.3 Garage. We will see you next time.